our need, as well as our need for containment, for belonging. Those two needs define us, define the goodness in us, so to speak, against everything else that happens afterwards. Healthy communities act as holding environments, so to speak, like a huge embrace. I wouldn't necessarily say maternal, but like a huge embrace which makes us feel safe, contained, protected, and we all need that. Consider that in juxtaposition to how modern cultures encourage greed, loneliness, narcissism, selfishness, and each one uh, looking after number one, and you will understand the kind of qualitative difference I'm talking about uh, there. In that kind of benevolent and nice environment, people, especially young people, want to feel welcome and protected. I recently did some work in East London with uh, other members of staff from UEL with, 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 with children at risk of, of joining gangs and, and committing crime uh, in their early years when they're 12 or 13, just 12 or 13, imagine. And what they told us repeatedly about working in a community, as a community, as a group is, for the first time in my life, I felt I was treated with respect and as an adult. And that's exactly what people find in community projects sometimes, in healthy community environments, because not all community environments are healthy. And this is what we're trying to do. Creativity, therefore, when it's fostered, builds capacity for health and healthy relations. I just want to read one line from Winnicott, who is a kind of object relations analyst and, 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 and the therapist who believed in communities and culture and made that an integral part of his work. He says that a healthy person is a person who can live from the self, withstand the inevitable conflicts that comprise daily life, and allow dependence on others and make use of the capacities to live, allow dependence on others. When communities are destroyed, what is destroyed is this faith and trust in the other person. And I believe that projects like Eduardo's foster exactly that, healthy reliance on one another. It's not helplessness to rely on other people, it's generosity when it's reciprocated and make everyone feel good. It's trust and trust is what builds communities. To come back to my original question, what does art do? Art represents, we have nothing else nothing else to communicate with apart from language, be that words or images, representation. And what that, that does on top of you know, expression in itself, it gives form to formlessness. If violence and aggression are like a scream, imagine a baby screaming in frustration, right? Words and images, creating words and images, harnesses this energy, sublimates, as psychoanalysts say, and also helps people heal the traumas, heal the anxiety, share, and in this very act of sharing, create the means of more healing and putting, you know, more good use, uh, art to more good use and language as well. So imagine giving created form out of formlessness. It's like using plasticine, like clay dough to create creatures and figures out, out, out of kind of a lump there. Imagine also the use, the, the positive and healing use of imagination and just having fun. In a society which is oriented mainly towards usefulness, a bit of productivity that also includes fun, sometimes, you know, feels a bit too much. People think they're not entitled to us. People don't know that. People haven't tried that because they haven't been invited to. Inviting people to create, inviting people to share in creating is an extremely powerful and liberating feeling and an activity as well, because it also builds what? Appreciation of beauty and daydreaming, if you like, and belief in one's capacities. Another British psychoanalyst, Bion, has written an extensive memoir of how he survived, he himself uh, went through his memories of war and survived that. 
through art and through an artistic engagement with his own trauma and his own experiences. It's actually a very kind of urgent modern question. What are we going to do about communities today? How we are going to build communities? And I know from my theoretical readings and from my own research that this is a question that is urgently discussed by philosophers, cultural theorists, sociologists, activ uh, activists, social workers, anyone with any involvement in the community. And uh, I just wanted to, to um, mention here the late Bernard Stigler, who says we read to re-enchant the world, re-magic the world, so to speak. And his proposal sounds so theoretical and airy fairy, you're thinking, what are you talking about? The answer to this is he's talking about what, what Eduardo is, is doing in the streets of Colombia. That's what he's talking about. Actually involving people. There is no messiah to save us, no government to intervene on our behalf, no big social change that's going to happen anytime soon, though we would love that very much. It's what we do now in ourselves and with our own means. And this is actually a way of allowing young people and communicating the message that this is how you repossess, reclaim the means of production. This is how you acquire a voice. You don't expect anyone to give it to you. This is how you exercise your imagination. And this is a process of reparation. This is a process of doing good where there was bad because it creates hope in a safe space in a space where everyone is welcome. And strangely, this space today needs to be public. It needs to be out there, literally out there in the streets so that everyone can see and participate. This kind of reparatory work has been used extensively with, uh, in cases where people had to deal with harrowing experiences of violence, trauma, civil war, and are tried and tested and work well. They're healing because they, they kind of harness destructive forces and gradually, slowly, imperceptibly transform them. And this is what people don't get sometimes about art, that it takes time, but it's the only uh, means left to us. The same with poetry, the same with language. I think Sonia knows all about that, being a poet herself and the person who has given so much to her community in Yuan with her poetry project of what, seven years now? Seven years, isn't it? Yeah. And this need for containment again is what is community. Community is what holds us and what we hold, if you like. And it's the present of our community. When I was talking to Sonia about uh, Eduardo's project and we're discussing aspects of it, there was another thing that uh, really, really impressed me not only the dimension of hope, which he actually allows people to share experience and pass on to each other, but another aspect of the community, which I think young people um, appreciate very much. One of the bigger problems nowadays is that there is a kind of disconnection of generations, so to speak. In traditional societies, Colombia, I, 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 I take it, used to be a traditional society, and where's the society I come from, Greece, ex experienced the kind of continuity of generations in which you learned from your fathers and your grandfathers and your mothers and your grandmothers. There was knowledge passed on from generation to generation, right? This has been disrupted from various for various reasons. Technological project is one of them. My son calls me affectionately a fossil. I'm a fossil to him. I don't know technology too much. He's right. But he, in a kind of, you know, joking manner, expresses his frustration. And perhaps the fact that like other kids in his generation, don't see how previous generations can be relevant to what they're doing. And what Eduardo is doing there is he's showing how young people can train other young people to take the mantle, to take the reins from what they are doing right now. Is there anything more reassuring for the continuity of generations. Isn't that just another lovely way of kind of creating generational continuity, creating memory in the community, creating links which survive, do not only give pleasure and meaning to the present group, but are perpetuated through time. 
I think that what Eduardo is doing is a prime example of the only way we have to combat hopelessness, crime, and above all, the lack, the lack of vision that characterizes most of our communities today. And uh, I think this passing on of this know-how and the desire to create, create art to uh, other generations is also another link in the kind of strong and deeply rooted community that he's, he's, he's actually making as we speak. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Thank you very much. Uh, what a lovely uh, talk, uh, very inspirational. Thank you. And now we welcome Cormac. Thank you, Cormac, and the space is all yours. Wonderful. Thank you. Wow, that was a, a powerful set of reflections. All I really want to do is to share some thoughts. I have a few slides, but they may or may not be relevant. And I'm really keen to hear what er Eduardo has to say, because I think our job is to lift up his story. So uh, I'll share a few thoughts and uh, I hope they, they build on what Angie has just shared. So the first thing is, I think when we think about community, as I understand it, and I think it links very closely to what Angie has just shared, I think what we're thinking about is something that's different than personal space or managed space. It's shared space. And when you think about shared space, I immediately think about gift exchange. I think about the things that we can share. Yes, we can share problems. Yes, we can share hopelessness. Yes, we can share fear. And there's plenty to go around. So there are some of the things we can share. We can also share knowledge, skills, passions, gifts. What's interesting about knowledge, skills, passions, and gifts is it's really hard for somebody outside to come in and take them from you. When the Montgomery Bus Company continue to oppress Black people and refuse to recognize their civil rights to walk free, people of color in 1955 used their assets to respond for 115 days. They used their feet to walk to work and walk back home again. And in the process brought the Montgomery Bus Company to its knees. It didn't have some Damascene revelational experience where it became good as a company. It counted the money it was losing and it made a business decision as a company. You see, the power that communities have is often in our own hands and in our own feet. And one of the quickest ways that we can hand that power over is we can figure out how we change the oppressor, how we reform the institution that's doing us down and forget what actually runs through our veins and what in all kinds of invisible ways connects us and makes us interdependent with each other and the planet we move through. Columbia, and uh, Rio Magdalena <laughs> have a story that goes back a long, long time in history. First peoples who walked Colombia may not have had a writing system or the wheel, but created some of the most sophisticated art and architecture the world has ever seen or is likely ever to see again. And even with all of our modern scientific understandings, we do not understand how those first peoples were able to do what they did with what they had. And I think one of the reasons we don't understand it is, is because to understand it is to have a creative mind, is to have a mind of a beginner's mind, not a childish mind, but a childlike mind. And in modern life, I think what we're called often to is problem solve. But in many respects, the minute we get locked into solving the problem, two things happen for us. One is, is that we start to polarize. We see this in the UK around Brexit, and we see this in the US around pretty much everything. <laughs> so polarization, which says, I have an opinion, and my opinion is more important than your opinion. 
I know my God is better than your God because my God hates people like you, so he or she must be right. You know, that kind of nonsense, which is a really good way of describing the opposite of community. So community somehow, I think, is the ability to be creative with other people. And in many respects, I think the wisdom of first peoples in indigenous cultures all throughout our history have been reminding us that that creativity is about being in right relationship. It's about relationships. It's about how we relate to ourselves, to each other, to the planet, to the way in which we move through the planet and the planet moves through us. And it's pretty clear that we're not in right relationship with each other at the moment. It's interesting, Angie was, was call, calling our attention back to how we as one of 8 million species function on the planet. One of the things that's really interesting from a psychosocial point of view is, is we're the only one of 8 million species on the planet who can be physically in each other's presence, but not actually show up. So we can be in the room, but not there, especially in modern life. What communities do when they are powerful and they're creative and they respond to conflict is they show up, they commit, they invest. They're willing to not alone reveal each other's gifts, but receive each other's gifts. And so a way of describing that, a way of saying that is, is you could say that what we see powerful communities doing is we see them working together with their neighbors, with near neighbors, not salaried strangers, using what is local to them to create together a better tomorrow. So in essence, they're using what they have to create what they need. Now, this is the exact opposite of a consumerist individualistic story. So the consumerist story says, folks, your good life is in the marketplace. This is the same colonial narrative that the Spanish brought to Colombia. It's the same colonial narrative that the English brought to Ireland. It's the same colonial narrative that the Romans brought to England. Everybody gets included here. Colonialism is the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> and it isn't finished yet. So if we're waiting for the emperor to get his act together before we act, we ain't ever going to act. If you're not the empire and you're not the emperor and you don't have power in that sense, you better make sure you've got people power. And people power comes from community. And community doesn't come from weakness or from looking at the half empty part of the glass, but it doesn't come from Pollyanna thinking either, from false hope. It comes from the willingness to share our gifts. And that's the essence of what I really wanted to lift up in my few remarks. Now, I think what, as I understand it from Sani, what, what Eduardo is reminding people that he brings into relationship is, you were born within, it's an old word, it's from North, North Africa, you were born with a genii. So this is where the word genius comes from. And genii is a gift. You have something unique within you, which you won't be fully human until you share with your community. But what he's also doing, and you can see it in this picture that Sonny showed us earlier, he's also then reminding the community that the community's responsibility is to receive the gift of every single individual member. Now, the problem or the challenge here for communities is that the minute we put a label on somebody, it is hard to see their gift. It is hard to see the gift they have to give the community. The minute we say that actually your good life is in the marketplace, not here among your neighbors, it's really hard to convince young people that they're needed. The minute we say to young people that we are only going to define you by what you receive from us and your neediness, it's really hard to convince them that they're needed. So modern life, I think, is the opposite of what I mean by community, where the message is your good life's in the marketplace, your individuality and what you consume matters more than your sense of community and what you contribute. And ultimately, the idea, I think, around this conversation is, is that Eduardo is saying that is not the case. 
there's another story and it's the story of we it's the story of us and what i love about what you're doing as i understand it is you're doing that not by teaching or preaching you're doing that by creating the conditions for young people to discover it themselves through their own creativity so it's a process of invitation rather than mandate. We can't impose community on people. We can't oblige people. People come to community by consent. That's why so many of our programs, our volunteering programs don't really work because they're too choreographed and they're too programmatized. So I think one of the best ways to respond to conflict is to see it as energy and to realize another form of energy is creativity. And the best way, therefore, to respond to the conflict of polarization is to get past opinions that polarize and to get past the answers that say yes or no, and to move into remembering that we're not just homo sapiens, we're homo faber. And faber is the idea of we're doers, we're makers, we're creators, we're craftspeople. And if we could get out of our white, Protestant, male, rational, traumatized brain and move back into our earthy, maternal, Inca, Reo Magdalena, linked roots into everything is interdependent, then we would understand that we are the creators of each other's well-being, that we're all interrelated. There is no them and us, there's us. So this great insight, I think, is, 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 is the real critical piece that Eduardo's work is lifting up for us and reminding us. Just one or two other thoughts before we finish. And, and I don't know, Sonny, if you wanted to say anything about your experience of the ABCD approach before I finish also, perhaps I can come back to you and ask you your thoughts. But I love this poem by, uh, it's actually an English poet, uh, David White, but it says we should start close in. So he says, start close in. Don't take the second step or the third step. Start with the first thing, close in, the step you don't want to take. I think there's a lot of wisdom in that poem and that, that first stanza, because my sense of it is, is that we live in a world that's like a three lane swimming pool where in the first lane, there are a whole raft of things that we can do together with ourselves and our own strengths, with our families and with our neighbors. That doesn't require outside intervention. That doesn't require us to be rescued or for the cavalry to come. Then there's a second lane in life's swimming pool where there's a whole range of things we can do with a small amount of help that's elegantly provided that's light touch, that's humble, like public servants who are not know-alls, who just serve us so that it, you know, we're not moving towards mass production, but so that we're creating the conditions whereby we have the production of the masses. And I think that's what Eduardo is doing. He's creating the production of the masses as distinct from mass production. This idea that if you've got a gift, you're welcome, bring your gift, and everybody has a gift to contribute in community. So community is interesting, you see, because community is, I don't know whether Marx actually understood this or not, I don't think he did, but community is the space where we're freest. So I think Marx wanted to try to reform the institution, but what he actually forgot was the power of community. Community is where everybody can bring their gifts potentially, and they're not a unit of production or consumption, they're a gift to the community. And in that way, they become mass, you know, mass collective producers. Everybody is, is producing. The third lane in the swimming pool is where we need things done for us. So I would say that in terms of conflict, if countries are experiencing the consumption of drugs, for example, by other countries, and that is damaging their social fabric, for example, the relationship between the US and Colombia, then that's on the US. And they have some responsibility around that, you know, whether that's the legalization of drugs or whatever the answer is. But there are some things that outside entities do need to do and be responsible for doing 
when it comes to community. And, you know, I think mostly those things are do no harm. Over and over again, we see outside institutions trying to fix broken communities, engage communities, make communities better. But actually, what outside institutions and countries need to do is stop doing harm, stop colonizing, stop controlling, stop narrowing, and stop abusing. We know that drug policies and the war on drugs are not actually advocating for the support and the well-being of Colombia, for poor families, or for families in the US that are poor either, it is doing great harm. The war on drugs has actually done more harm than good. So there is a piece in that third lane for the US and institutions to take some responsibility for creating the space for communities to flourish. So I think when that space is created, then amazing things can happen. And the proof of that, I think, is in the history of Colombia itself. You know, we know already before colonization that amazing things were created from the ground up through the gifts and the capacities of local communities joining together. So the trick is, how can we remove the colonial yoke and create the freedom for people to remember again just how powerful they can be when they're creative. So, Sonny, I just wanted to hand over to you. And I, and I really like that approach. Um, for me, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much, Korma, for your inspiration, your words, your clarity, and your speech was amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And now I want to invite uh, Eduardo. Uh, Eduardo is, uh, is at the moment in Hamundi, he's in Colombia. And uh, Kalu Lima is going to translate Eduardo's presentation. So maybe it's going to be a, a gap in between, but just be patient with that one. And at the end, remember, we are going to have a time for uh, questions. So please, if you have any question for Cormac, for Angie, for Eduardo, or even for me, if you want to know a little bit more ABCD uh, or the community work that we are doing in Newham, please just let, let us know. And the chat is open, so you can post your question there or uh, wait until the end, and then we can, you can open the mic and ask the questions. Eduardo, estamos aquí para escucharte. We're okay. here to hear you. Yeah. Bueno, eh, cordial saludo de nuevo para todas y para todos. Greetings for everyone. Lástima no, no entender eh, lo que dijo Angie lo que dijo Corman, sé que fueron cosas muy buenas. It's a shame not be able to understand fully like what Angie and Corman were sharing. I'm sure it was like great things. Me hubiera encantado, pero bueno. Eh, parto, I would have liked to. Parto desde el contexto colombiano eh, y cómo desde el arte estamos aportando a una transformación social. I would like to start in the Colombian context and how from the arts we are contributing towards a social transformation. En el contexto colombiano donde el 50% de la tierra está en manos del 1% de la población colombiana. In the Colombian context, 50% of the land is in the hands of 1% uh, of the population. Y donde la corrupción a nivel político es el foco de la problemática colombiana. And corruption in politics is, uh, is at the focus of uh, Colombians' problems and issues. La política, y parto en el contexto del arte, de que todo arte es político. Uh, in, in approaching politics and understanding that all art is politic, is, is a political statement. La corrupción hace que los dineros o los recursos que van para educación, para salud, para... <laughs> ¿sí? Uh, corruption uh, therefore impacts the, the funding and resources that are destined to, towards education, health. Sí. Hace que los que llegan a la política 
piensen en, tengan esa mentalidad, perdón, del más tener y de conseguir sus cosas materiales. It just y makes esa, it, it makes it so that everyone that actually achieves a, a, a post in politics is thinking about themselves and achieving their own goals. Y esa es la mentalidad que tuvieron desde jóvenes y lo que se le inculcó desde niños. And that was, that was the mentality they had as young people, but it was also, they were also conditioned as children. Ahí parte el problema en nuestros niños y nuestros jóvenes, cuando no hay salud y no hay educación. That's, that's part of, of one of the roots of the problem, when there is no education and no help, no access to health. No hay fuentes de trabajo. There is no employment. Ahora estamos en una sociedad de consumo donde el tener cosas materiales, que es el ejemplo que dan los políticos. We are in a cons consumerist uh, society where politicians are these role models of, of having and possessing, of having things. Hace que la vida de un ser humano valga menos que un celular. Porque it, acá matan por un celular. And, and, and therefore it makes that the, the price or the cost of a human life is less than a mobile phone. Because here in Colombia people are being killed uh, for mobile phones. Bueno. Quisiera hablar muchas cosas, pero, pero yo creo que aquí voy a tener que reducir en, en, en un 20% de todo lo que quisiera decir. There's so much I would like to share, but I have to cut it down to at least 20% of all the things uh, I would like to express right now. En sí, lo que, lo que hacemos con el arte y lo que yo he podido identificar con esta arma, porque estamos hablando en un contexto de un país guerrerista, Uh, so what we do with art uh, and how we and what we do with this uh, weapon and we call it a weapon in the context of a, a country in war. Es un arma, le llamo yo, de construcción para construir y no para destruir, que es lo que yo le digo al joven. Is a weapon of construction and not of destruction. Is so, that what I, what I share with uh, young people? Donde identificamos tres temas o he identificado los tres temas de los cuales yo puedo aportarle o el arte puede aportarle a cambiar nuestra sociedad colombiana. And we have identified three areas in which the art can uh, contribute to change Colombian society. Es en la parte de la expresión, la parte laboral y la parte terapéutica. In the area of expression, in the area of employment and in a therapeutic space. Y yo me enfoco en la expresión y lo laboral. Son dos partes que nos pueden ayudar mucho. I focus on the expression and the employability, which are areas that can help us a lot. La parte de la expresión en el arte se vio con tanta fuerza ahora en el, en el paro nacional que hubo acá en Colombia el 28 de abril. The, the bit about art was uh, clearly seen during the, the national strike that took place from the 28th of April this year. Donde el arte y las prácticas artísticas tuvieron la batuta y la mayor importancia a nivel nacional en el paro. Where art and creative expression had a, a key role within the national strike. La música, la danza, la pintura, todas esas expresiones salieron a flote y, co y vimos cómo el gobierno tambaleó por primera vez en una protesta social. So music, uh, dance, uh, drawing, art, all these creative expressions uh, surfaced in response and we could witness how the, the government and the authorities uh, felt 
shaken in this in a national context for the first time throughout. En la parte laboral, que es con la que también me he identificado y es por la cual yo he tomado este rol también. In the employment aspect, that is one which I have felt identified with and that I've also, why I have also assumed this role that I have. Por experiencia propia. Based on my own personal experience. Sé que hay muchos jóvenes en Colombia, eh, en todo Colombia, aquí en Jamundí, en Cali, que tienen talento, tienen igual que yo, porque yo comencé empírica, empíricamente. So I know that there exists lots of young people in Jamundí, uh, in Cali, all over Colombia that, like me, have the talent and we've been amateurs, we've sort of self-taught. Talentos que he visto en algunas personas, algunos jóvenes, tuve dos casos eh, muy cercanos de alguien que tenía el talento, pero nunca lo explotó. And, y and, esta persona. Yeah, talents that I, I had two cases in which I witnessed young people with lots of talents, but the, there was not the opportunity to explore this. Y esa persona, ese joven, fue asesinado porque entró en el mundo ilícito de drogas y de conseguir el dinero fácil para conseguir cosas materiales. And one of them was murder ended up in, in the world of illicit drugs and quick money to achieve a, a financial gain, but also get um, yeah, consumer stuff. Y así hay muchísimos casos más en Colombia. Así hay there, muchísimos casos más. There are many, many more cases like this. Se trata de potenciar estos talentos desde la etapa estudiantil para so, que tengan una posibilidad. The idea is to, to amplify and, and uh, support this potential um, in, the, in the face of like during the school years. So there is this, the possibility emerges. Igual que la tuve yo. Solo la rebusqué, solo la busqué y solo la tengo y esa experiencia la comparto con los jóvenes. Which was something that is, comes from my own experience and that's why, that this is what I share with other young people right now. ¿Cuál es el trabajo de Pintando el Valle, el grupo que conformamos en el cual está Sonia? So what's the work of uh, Painting the Valley, the group that I that I founded and who's uh, Sonia is part of it. Fomentar e incentivar el arte. To promote, to, to promote art, to create spaces. Crear espacios para eh, visibilizar el trabajo de los jóvenes, para fomentarlo en los niños y a partir de estos, Empezar a hacer un trabajo con la base. La base son los niños y los jóvenes que tienen esa mentalidad de lo material y del consumismo. So the idea is to, to amplify, to bring visibility to the work that's being uh, produced and that we can work at, at the root with those children and young people that have already, they're being conditioned into uh, uh, capitalism and consumerism. Si trabajamos con la comunidad infantil, el arte vamos a fomentar o a incrementar su creatividad, que es demasiado importante. When we, work with, when we work with uh, young people, with children, at, at that young age, we're already encouraging and promoting their creativity, which is key for their development. La parte psicomotriz, cognitiva y la sensibilidad. So this is supporting the like coordination skills, uh, their cognition and sensitivity to the surroundings. Esto lo tiene claro el Ministerio de Educación y el Ministerio de Cultura. 
Yo tengo un documento. This is clear uh, for the Department of Education and the Department of Culture here in Colombia. Del Ministerio de Educación, donde están algunos de estos ítems, pero no se aplican en la educación. I have a document from the Department of Education uh, where some of these items are, are described and, and expressed and included, but they're not applied in actual mainstream education. La creatividad es muy importante en, en nuestros niños, estimular su creatividad y su parte sensible, porque la parte sensible hace que no vayan a matar por un celular, que la vida no valga menos que un celular. So, stimulating the creativity and but also that uh, sensibility in young people is what's going to lead them to think twice uh, uh, when they're in, 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 in the situation that, where they might kill somebody else uh, to obtain a material possession, in this case, a mobile phone. That life, human life, works more than a mobile phone. Esa parte sensible ante el prójimo, ante la otra edad, me importa el otro. Sí me importa, pero también ante el medio ambiente. Is that developing that sensitivity to, uh, towards the other, to otherness, that I care about the other one, that the other one cares, uh, but also uh, the environment. Eh, la parte en cuanto a los jóvenes, estamos hablando de la comunidad infantil. Ahora hablemos de los jóvenes. I was uh, focusing on children and now I'm going to speak about young people specifically. Cuando ellos ya tienen este trabajo sensible, crítico, que se sigue trabajando a través del arte, hay otra parte que es la crítica constructiva. So once we've developed and been uh, working and encouraging uh, both sensitivity and uh, it is important then to focus on constructive criticism. Y ahí yo entro a trabajar con la pedagogía del oprimido de Paulo Freire. There's where I start working with uh, the um, pedagogía del oprimido. Op uh, I'm going to need help here. Uh, how do you translate um, the work of Paulo Freire? It's a uh, oppressed uh, pedagogy of the oppressed. Pedagogy of oppressed. Op oppress op can can you can somebody <laughs> open their mic and say that again, please? Pe pedagogy of the oppressed. Okay, so. So uh, Eduardo has been working uh, in this moment with the pe pedagogy of the oppressed by Paulo Ferrer. Donde creamos las posibilidades de aprendizaje del arte, pero también eh, la parte de la deconstrucción a partir de nuestro propio contexto histórico. So as in which we create the spaces to explore art, but also a space to deconstruct from our own uh, historical context. Si nosotros conocemos nuestro propio contexto histórico, empezamos a deconstruir y no deconstruir como destruir, sino de poner en duda. So once we know our own uh, historical context, we can start deconstructing, uh, not, as, not as a way of destructing, but as a way of questioning. Questionarse. Questioning. Questioning, questioning ourselves. Sobre el de las cosas. Les pongo Question, un questioning about the, the reason for things to be the way they are. I'm going to share aquí an example. Aquí en Jamundi, hay un monumento al cacique Jamundí. Uh, here in Jamundí, there, there is a monument uh, to, uh, of an uh, indigenous, uh, a native uh, Colombian uh, man called uh, Jamundí. Quien puso resistencia a los españoles Sebastián de Belalcázar cuando entraron por Jamundí. 
that was the one as part of the resistance against uh, the Spaniard Sebastián de Belalcázar, uh, that was one of the colonizers. In Cali, está el monumento a Sebastián de Belalcázar. In, in Cali, which is the, the city, biggest city close to us, you have the monument of the colonizer of Sebastián de Belalcázar. En este paro nacional del que hablamos, la comunidad indígena lo derribó, lo tumbó. During this national strike that I shared about, the indigenous community tore down this monument. Y hay un dilema donde la gente, mucha gente de Cali dice que es un icono de la ciudad y que lo restablezcan. And so the, right now there is a dilemma between the uh, citizens of Cali between, uh, because they refer to that monument as an icon of the city and that it needs to be uh, erected again. Ahí parte del problema de la educación donde no conocemos nuestro propio contexto histórico. There is how we can see uh, part of the issues of not uh, knowing our own historical context and the issues with education specifically. Bueno, eso en cuanto a la parte eh, de educación, en cuanto a los jóvenes y, y la, la educación infantil. That's in de, relation to education, education with young people and with children. Nos basamos en la pedagogía del oprimido y también en cuanto a al artista uruguayo Luis Kamnitzer quien hizo una obra, un escrito sobre la enseñanza del arte como fraude. Uh, so we, you, we use both the pedagogy of the oppressed and also uh, a work by a Uruguayan uh, artist called Luis Carnitzer. Uh, and the piece is called the... The enseñanza. Mm. El estudio del Training? arte. Como fraude. Del, el estudio. So, so the study of art as a fraud. Sí. The study of art as a fraud. Sí. En el, el contexto. Sí, sí, es la enseñanza, pero pues pongámoslo así. Entonces, ¿cómo eh, la burbuja del arte hoy en día? Hace que si tus obras no están exhibidas en un museo, no son obras de arte. So how this, uh, the, the, the bubble of the art world has made it that if your, if your, if your artwork is not uh, exhibited somewhere in a gallery, then it's no art. El trabajo nuestro lleva el arte y siempre eh, lo he tenido así al espacio público, a los parques, a la calle. Our work has always uh, focused on taking art to public spaces, to the parks, to the streets. Como parte tenemos, de la tenemos dos minutos más para uh, la presentación. Two minutes como, parte, left. Okay. como parte de la democratización del arte. As a way la, la, to democratize art. Bueno, eh, resumiendo, resumiendo, eh, a través del arte podemos transformar nuestra sociedad y con to, un to summarize through art we can transform and change our society en Colombia con un joven un joven que le arrebatemos a la violencia ya estamos haciendo el trabajo and in Colombia with one young person that we snatch away from violence we're doing the work correctly En este paro nacional vimos muchos jóvenes artistas que se lanzaron a protestar mediante el arte. During the national strike, we saw lots of young people, artists, that were protesting through their art. Y se vio el poder que tiene el arte en la transformación social. And we could all Seguimos see trabajando. the power that art has in, in the context of social transformation. Seguimos trabajando desde Jamundí 
aportando un granito de arena a la transformación social. Gracias a ustedes y no es más. We will continue working in Hamondi, contributing to this with this um, grano de arena. Um, grain of, of, of sand towards the like global social transformation. Thank you, Eduardo. And thank you, Kalu. <laughs> Me quedan muchas cosas, pero bueno, eso es como resumiendo. There's yes. lots more I would like to share, but that's sort of in summary. Thank you so much, Eduardo. Um, I met Eduardo six, seven years ago. Um, it was an, a strange and beautiful connection because I was looking for something positive in my, in my city. Uh, after my first trip, after many years without being in Colombia, and I was in an airplane coming from Colombia, and I was so frustrating to haven't found anything that I value. I was the same uh, frustration and the same violence in my country. And I, I remember I was in the airplane uh, and I was thinking, I'm never going back to Colombia, you know, I'm never going back to Colombia. And then I remember Cormac's words that be focused in what is good, not in what is wrong. So after I remember that quote, I start to look in uh, Facebook and in Google and everywhere what was happening in Colombia that I can feel again that connection. And I found Eduardo. So this is how I meet Eduardo, <laughs> actually. So Pintando el Valle is uh, Eduardo um, initiative. Uh, is, uh, he, he didn't mention the beginning of uh, Pintando el Valle, uh, painting the valley. And he was uh, sitting around the, the park in the central park in the town, just in front of the town hall in Hamundi with some canvas and paintings and brush just painting like a, a way to, uh, I don't know, to protest for the lack of funding and support from the government to the art in Hamundi. So he was sitting there with a canvas. And after a few months, he was around with so many people, young people painting with him in the Central Park. And it's still happening. Eduardo, uh, Piernes de Pintura, no? Sí. It's still happening, Fridays of Painting. And after so many years, it's still happening in Central Park in Colombia, in Hamundi. And actually now it's a community. It's a community of people that are hungry to find another way to be educated. And I don't know, but uh, for me, it's like community is the new school. It's the new yeah. place that people are going to learn how to be together with people, not just following instructions, but actually following humanity. Yes, Eduardo? Sí, quería decir que, eh, y es de recalcar en esta administración, que la Secretaría de Gobierno sabe la importancia del arte y está haciendo el trabajo con el arte en el espacio público. Y yo estoy trabajando con el secretario porque lo conozco desde hace, antes de que él se metiera a la política. Y sé que le gusta el arte y que sus hijos también, sus hijas les gusta el arte. Salud, que yo te sé. Sí, sí, sí. ¿Estás hablando de Jamundí? Sí, yes, Jamundí. So, the, right now, the local government uh, is aware um, of the importance of art, and I'm currently working directly um, con, with the Secretary of, of Art, which I used culture, to, yeah. uh, and, and culture which I had a connection with before he uh, entered the, the role he's now in. I think, thank you very much. Thank you for the speakers and all of you. And think uh, now we can open the, the microphone for questions. So maybe if Margarita have some question in the chat, so we can answer the question. Uh, as I say, you can open the mic and ask the question for yourself. Or if you feel more comfortable, you can use the, the chat. And if you can write the name of the person that you would prefer to answer the, uh, the question, or if it's just general. Angie, I think you are raising your hand. I have, uh, Raymond was the first one to ask a question on the chat. Um, I'm looking for them. Uh, Raymond, can't see them. So I'll hi. first ask it's Angie. Yeah, hi. I'm, my, I'm Raymond. I'm a, 
I study at UEL. I'm one of Angie's students. Hi, uh, good evening, Angie. Good evening, everyone. Um, I've read a lot about what's happening in Colombia, and over the years, it seems that even though Ecuador is reaching out to the youngsters for them to get involved in the arts, where, where I mean, where is it all being? Where's the money all coming from? Because don't forget. There's a high level of crime and corruption in politics, in the police force, judges and lawyers. And they have the people that have money, they're holding on to it and they're not really going to let it go to the communities where people are, are living a ravaged a ravage life that's, that's, and, and living in poverty. I mean, I know you're reaching out to the youngsters and getting them involved in, 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 in arts and whatever, but how long will that how long will that interest hold because at the end of the day they want to make money so that they can keep a roof over their head um eat food buy clothes um it's all about consumer consumerism and capitalism so where are you what i mean it's a catch-22 situation isn't it can you translate uh, is the question for everyone just trying to understand what can you can you summarize your question so i can ask eduardo please what i'm trying to say is that at the end of the day um the youth the, the youngsters are are um they're more they're more interested in 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 getting money and obtaining things there's a high high rate of mobile first how are you going to keep their interest okay going in the arts okay uh eduardo pregunta a raymond eh, que, los, que es muy probable que los jóvenes estén altamente interesados en, en bienes, posesiones materiales y también tengan responsabilidades financieras. Ah, ¿Y cómo logras mantenerlos eh, ese interés? ¿Cómo lograr mantener ese interés por el arte en el contexto de sus propias necesidades financieras? Sí, ahí es donde, donde yo diferencio una cosa de la otra. Por ejemplo, el, la parte de la expresión con la parte laboral. That's why I di differentiate uh, the area of uh, interest and expression and then the area of employability. Yo, por ejemplo, en mi caso, pinto, utilizo la técnica artística para conseguir dinero, para vender. So Tienes I personally, in my, own, in my own experience, I use artistic expression to 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 raise money, to make money, to sell. I sell my art. Donde tienes que tener talento. Y hay muchos talentos en las escuelas y colegios. And, and uh, it comes from having talent. And there is a lot of talent uh, at, in schools. Donde no son potenciados y no son visibilizados y no se dan cuenta que puede ser una opción laboral. There is a lot of potential, but which is not being uh, amplified. There is no visibility is not being brought to. And so therefore it misses the opportunity in becoming a source of income. El trabajo más grande es el que se está haciendo con la base, con los niños y jóvenes para que cambien su mentalidad. Y cuando esos lleguen a la política, no piensen como los políticos de hoy en día. The biggest work that we're doing is working with young people, uh, children and young people to shift that mentality. So if they end up in that, as they end up in that places of politicians, they will have a different perspective. Porque la, el político debe pensar en el pueblo, pero piensa es en él. Because nowadays the politicians should be thinking about the people, but they're thinking about themselves. Entonces, es un cambio, es, es aportar un granito a un gran cambio que no se va a dar ahora. It's, it's making a small contribution towards the change that is not going to happen overnight. No sé si eso responde a la pregunta. Can I, can I add something? Uh, from my own experience with the, with uh, working with with Eduardo, uh, with Pintando el Valle, painting the ballet, and also with the New Han Poetry Group, I think um, what Eduardo uh, said really really well is is what is happening also here, that is not only is is only is is also giving people the opportunity to know what is to have a community that support them. 
So it's, uh, it's, not, it's not just like everyone is going to become an artist or everyone is going to become a poet, you know. This is not my, my purpose, for example, in the New Ham Poetry Group, the poetry group that I have. It's not like every single person is going to publish a book and it's going to have money. It's that giving that person uh, skills and abilities that any single work that they are going to do, they are going to try to do that one and find the best that they can, they can, they can give in that job but also have some kind of personal development. I mean, I can I can still be working. I don't know in a in a place that probably I don't find a lot of pleasure, but still I am going to keep this community, these people that care about me and I care about them, and they is giving sense to to your life, um, not just to have a world or eight five. That is nothing wrong with that one, but I think with a sense of community in Pintando al Valle or in the poetry group or in any many other community groups that we have is find these, these people that care about you. And in the bad moments of your life, they are going to try to support you. I don't know if a Korma want to add something about that one. Just a few things. When, whenever in colonial history, uh, the colonizers try to really break the spirit of people, they didn't focus on the leaders first. The two people they killed off first were the sacred clowns, right? And then the spiritual leaders, okay? Uh, shaman, there's different words for this. The point is, is that what these people did constantly was they took the conversation away from it being about performance or personal development. And they kept reminding people that a good life is founded on a sense of belonging and a sense of I am somebody because I contribute to my community. Now, what gangs do is, you see, Raymond, your question's really revealing because your question carries to me an assumption. The assumption is, is in order to have a good life, I have to get money. I think the gangs don't just give the kids money. I think they give them two other things. They give them a sense of community and they give them a sense of purpose. They say, you are somebody, look how good you are at running, look how good you are at selling, look how good you are at turning a deal, look how good you are at not getting caught. You belong now. We will give you everything that your community failed to give you. The answer to the gang is to give community back to the child so they don't have to find it in the gang. You know, it's said that it takes a village to raise a child. You know the rest of that? The rest of that says that if the village fails to raise the child, the child will burn the village down to feel its warmth. That's what Eduardo's interrupting. He's turning back to the village and he's saying, the gang is powerful because you are weak. The gang is providing to these kids the associational life that you're not. Wake up. This isn't just about money. And the minute we say it is about money, the minute we say it's about materialism, we lose our greatest power. That's the point. Our power well, isn't in the money, Raymond. That's the point. What, I hear I, and that's I, the gang. That's the gang. I talking. completely understand what you're saying. But if you look at it in perspective, if a youngster, as in London, is offered material goods and the opportunity to have lots of money or go into the arts and be a poet, nine times out of ten. Because you're miscarried, you're misunderstanding, you're no, totally no, I'm, misunderstanding, Eduardo. No, no, but See, I'm, just that isn't... This, I'm just saying this, that at the end of the day, okay, they will rather go and get the, the quick money than be a, an artist or be a poet, because, I mean... Raymond, thank you so teacher. much for your contribution, you. Raymond. We have other questions that we need to go on to if there's time we can come back to thank you, you. If, thank you so much for your contribution uh can angie please have uh the word thank you thank you i would like to uh ask cormac and sonia to say uh, just a little bit more about the approach the mesh ABCD approach and uh, but I, first i would like to ask eduardo the following question how does your experience of working with communities has changed you as an artist what has been the impact to you as a person and as an artist? Thank you, guys. El, Eduardo, el trabajo que has venido haciendo en la comunidad, ¿cómo te ha impactado y te ha cambiado a ti como una persona y como artista? 
Pues mucho, porque cuando inicié en el campo del arte, eh, no quería saber nada de dar clases a nadie. A lot. Simplemente pintar. When I started uh, with my in, in the area of art, I just wanted to like paint. I didn't want to be giving classes. It had nothing to do with others. It had to do with me. Cuando comienzo a trabajar con los jóvenes y hoy en día o al transcurrir el tiempo, los padres y las madres me agradecían. Gracias a usted, mi hijo, esto. Gracias a usted, mi hijo, aquello. Eso me llenaba mucho. Me llena. When I started working with young people, I had uh, parents approaching me, thanking me for the work I was doing in, in supporting their, their talent. But, uh, and that started to, uh, it, it, it felt fulfilling, it felt meaningful. Y ahora el poder trabajar con muchos más chicos o el ver resultados, por ejemplo, de muchos de estos jóvenes que hoy en día ya son artistas egresados de universidades. And, and now to, to be able to witness the journey of some of these young people that are now artists who have gone through university and have graduated and continue to be artists. Y que su pensamiento es diferente al de los jóvenes de la edad de ellos. O sea, and su that, pensamiento ha cambiado totalmente. And that the way that they think and their perspective is different uh, from other people their age. Son personas que... Si tienen un millón de pesos para comprar un celular, pero si su mamá debe arriendo, no se van a comprar el celular que tanta popularidad le va a dar, sino que se lo van a dar a la mamá. Uh, so there's a, these are people that if they had one million Colombian pesos to buy a mobile phone, but they knew their mother was owing some rent, they would, they would happily give this money towards uh, paying that debt. Que es el problema hoy en día, que se pone por encima lo material del bien familiar y de, y de los otros. Which is one of the big issues right now that uh, we're prioritizing that uh, individual consumer uh, experience above the, the, the family, the community's needs. The other question was for Sonia and Cormac from Angie regarding the ABC approach. I think Cormac, Cormac is the, the person that can <laughs> answer that question. <laughs> Angie, thanks for the question. I just maybe briefly say a word or two in the background of ABCD. And then unfortunately, I'm going to have to love you and leave you uh, because I have a, another call to go to. The background of ABCD is probably very ancient in the sense of this idea that communities have resources and when they're enabled to discover, connect and mobilize them, then amazing things happen. Uh, it, culture is created and so forth. So I think that's a 70,000 year old story emerging out of the uh, Rift Valley in Africa and, uh, and, and moving around the world. But in its more recent expression, uh, John McKnight and Jody Kretzman, two community organizers, and later on in their career, professors of community development in Chicago, began to realize an awful lot of universities were going into communities and asking communities what was wrong and what was broken, you know, how we solve the gang crime, you know, how we deal with all of these issues, which are legitimate questions. But what they found was every time they asked people those questions, it pushed people back into a corner and it made people in communities feel powerless and feel like the only thing that they could hope to do really was give people a shopping list, outside experts, a shopping list of how to fix their brokenness. And that's a little bit why I was trying to um, really say in, in response to Raymond's question, we've got to question the questions because the questions carry assumptions around what a community is, what a young person is, you know, where the power lies. And I get it, you know, it's, it's part of the modern narrative. But what John and Jody did was they said, let's ask different questions. So they went in and they started asking communities across North America and now subsequently in 36 countries around the world, what is it you do together with your neighbors to make things better? And what we find is when we go in with curiosity rather than trying to help people, when we actually listen, we discover that in all kinds of ways, communities are actually doing things to be health creating, safety creating, 
to you know create prosperity that are largely invisible we can't see them because we don't value them and what really struck me about Eduardo's story is not the art with respect to Eduardo I, I don't I don't see him just as an artist I see him as a community builder I see him as create the art is just an excuse for people to gather and in many respects it's a beautiful and it's a precious excuse but it's just an excuse it could be something else it could be soccer in Brazil you know it's but what ends up happening I think is that people when they're listened to have all kinds of stories about how they're powerful together which largely don't appear when we ask them what's wrong what's broken what's pathological and that's the background to ABCD when we start with what's wrong we get a shopping list of services and needs. When we start with what's strong, we start to discover all of the things that people are already doing. And then the next conversation is, how might we get alongside them to support them to do more of that? You know. And by the way, just in relation to one or two other questions, the answer to that isn't always, let's get the government to fund us. I don't think this revolution is going to be funded. Right? 1.5 trillion dollars in the United States of America is given by the government to the third sector. And every single dollar has to come with it, an agreement that says we will say nothing negative about our government. I'm not preaching anarchy here, but if the third sector can't be critical about their government, I'm not quite sure what we're doing. So, you know, the, so the, the other piece I want to call attention to in, in Eduardo's work is, is it's a statement uh, in favor of a more just society. So it's not a relief action. It's not a service. It's about creating a better social order. And I think we need to pay attention to that. Now, if that happens through art, it happens through dance, it happens through other means, that's the human expression of how we have from the beginning of time become stronger together. That's the background to ABCD. Thank you so much, Cormac. It's always a pleasure just to listen to you and learning from you. Amazing. Thank you Likewise, so much. Likewise, we're learning together. I'm sorry to have to go. No, thank Keep you. Thank you on. very much. Stay in, stay thank in you trouble. for coming. <laughs> we try. <laughs> Next up, uh, we had Gabby uh, coming to the chat saying, um, how do you reach out um, to engage with young people and how do you gain their trust? This is for... Eduardo, um... ¿Cómo, eh, ¿cómo consigues eh, este, el, el interés eh, de, de las personas jóvenes uh, y cómo fomentas la confianza? ¿Cómo, cómo ganas tu confianza? Eh, el trabajo en el espacio público y como experiencia propia el mostrar de que por medio de la técnica artística se puede tener una independencia de pensamiento y también laboral. I work in a, in a public space um, and I also can like constantly prove that through artistic expression you can gain independence uh, not, not only of your own mind and thoughts and perspective but also financially. Yo inicié trabajando en el espacio público. I started working in public space and I continue to work. Y sigo trabajando socialmente ya en el espacio público. And I continue working socially in public space. Gabby also asked, how, how do you keep them engaged? ¿Cómo haces para, para mantenerlos interesados? Eh, creando espacios, creando espacios de participación. Por medio de Pintando el Valle creamos exposiciones, creamos, Sonia nos ayudó con concursos, a veces hacemos concursos. We create, está, ¿sí? we create lots of different uh, spaces uh, that are participatory. Uh, we, we have uh, competitions, we have exhibitions. Y aunque eso está en la ley colombiana, que deben hacer ese tipo de cosas que no se hacen muchas And, veces. Uh, and bearing in mind that this is part of, uh, it's in Colombian law that this should be happening, but it's not happening. Nosotros creamos eh, como pintura al parque, creamos expo colectivas, concursos, ya lo dijimos. Entonces, we create hay... lots of different participatory spaces. Sí. 
Mm. Um, I'm gonna sk skip one last uh, question from uh, Gabby for the moment. Yes, if you if you want to be in contact in the chat, there is the all the contact details of the speakers, and also if you want to know more about Pintando el Valle, painting the ballet. If you want to know about uh, what we have been organizing, please just keep in contact. We have uh, emails address, uh, all the details about Cormac, Angie, myself, Eduardo. So keep in contact. And this is the first one of, I hope, many other uh, workshops about this very relevant topic. And I really want to uh, express my gratitude to every single person who joined us today. I think it's very, very relevant, the topic about building community. As Cormac said and uh, uh, Angie said and also Eduardo, this is not just about uh, uh, be together uh, to create job opportunities, but it's an excuse to be together and support each other in, in a kind and um, uh, more human way. So please keep in touch and I hope you all enjoy. If you have more questions, please just send us to the emails that are in the chat and we are very uh, keen to send the questions to the participants, to the speakers, and probably you are going to have the answer from us, um, and then we can keep in touch. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. If you want to just say hello with your hands. <laughs> Gabby. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope to see you soon in more events of this type. Big, thank big thanks to Carlo for translating. Superb job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well done. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Thank you for doing Bye, the everyone. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.